on everybody here to give you guys a review for love hip-hop miami season one episode two called forbidden feuds question of the day in reference to uh kiara and bucky and their respective situations and what they're going through would you ever or have you ever relocated for love i haven't <laughs> but uh I probably would say earlier in life I might have at this stage I'm not saying that I wouldn't but it's going to be one of those where definitely if we can't be dating <clears throat> it we literally need to be on the cusp of marriage and even if I do decide to move I'm not going to move and not have money saved up all this other stuff you know a nest egg because <clears throat> Hey, if I'm relocating to where she at, well, hey, shit, go left. I get kicked out. I got to make sure that everything is good for me in terms of a job, this and third, before I even put myself in that situation. But that's just me. Y'all let me know uh, how y'all feel about that. <clears throat> get into this review. I'm going to say this uh, gave me a hell of a lot more than New York. <clears throat> and I'm so serious. Like, I'm on the verge of dropping that particular fucking show but since i'm starting i want to fucking finish all right so we got pleasure and bucky he's not okay with uh you know what bbw said but you know he wants to get to the bottom of everything bucky rolls up you know while he's on his phone that she is being mad disrespectful just like can you get off the phone bye bye yeah get off the phone now that's one of those where i'm cool by a lot of shit I don't tolerate disrespect. I, I, re I really don't. Not some shit like that. Especially like when you on some Bodine type of shit. You not finna ro Nah. We not, we not finna do that. I, c I can tell you I would have handled that a little bit differently than pleasure. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna be honest. Um, <clears throat> in reference. And he says in reference to. You know why the group uh, broke up. She says why are you going backwards. He says that's between me and God. And then tells her, you are not God. <laughs> and she starts crying. I'm just like, damn, that must have hit a motherfucking tender spot right there. And <clears throat> he tells her, uh, hold on, wait. All right, so he says to her, that, you know, like, you're disrespecting my people. You're disrespecting us. You're disrespecting yourself. She be, and like I said, she's still crying. So it's the the way the way he's talking to her is almost like a parent, where it's just like you know your actions, you're disrespecting, you know, my people, you're disrespecting us as a like it was one of those, and I'm just like, <clears throat> either she didn't went to acting classes or she really felt this, but I don't really feel the ways, and I don't because again she was on Flavor Love, Charm School, Love Hip Hop Atlanta. Now she's here. And there was another one in between these four. Way too much. Way, 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 way too much. So, whatever. <clears throat> she says he never had her back. And says that, uh, you know, what he did. Oh, wait, okay. She, okay. She was like, you never had my back. And he was just like, so I didn't have your back with the Scrappy thing. And she pretty much says him, Scrappy would have never let someone else disrespect me the way that you let someone disrespect me now you you might you might be right <clears throat> but you damn sure let him disrespect you when you thought shit was sweet and he proposed to his baby mama your face was broken <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying, like it's hard for me to have sympathy for it it, it really <laughs> And if I'm stumbling with these notes, like, no shit, I wrote, like, I watched this this morning. I just finished watching New York. Like I said, I've been in school and whatnot, so, like, I'm trying to get this out when I can. Like, I'm busy as fuck. <laughs> mm, not the point. So, we meet a guy named Prince. He's a promoter. He has a friend named DJ E. Feezy. And he gives him some pointers on, you know, trying to conquer Miami. Now, he mentions a female named DJ Mich Michelle Pooch. That is his competition. She's uppity. She's very, very uppity now. He crashed, apparently. 
her, uh, I guess, like a little soiree, a little fuss she was having. And she pretty much calls him and his crew Ratchet. We gonna revisit that. Because I'm trying to figure out if he... We'll revisit it. We'll definitely revisit it. <clears throat> so we got Veronica Vega. And I'm gonna just say she looked like Gloria Govan and Lady Gaga's child. Like, I'm, I'm gonna just say that. That's what I like. And just looking at the face is what I saw. And I'm not even gonna fucking lie. I, mm, she ain't all that. So she's a recording artist. Amara Negra meets with her to recap the uh, Young Hollywood incidents. And she breaks down in front of her because that's her friend. Also, a girl named Steph is there. And Veronica tells her that there are girls like her that, you know, pretty much she's fighting for. That's going to look up to her and don't let another motherfucker pretty much invalidate you, which was some good fucking advice. But again, I think we all kind of feel that we're not going to fuck with her, you know, the rest of the season. After this fucking episode, I'm not fucking with her. You know, I'm just saying. <clears throat> Moving forward. What? Alright, so we got Joy. Joy is treated as our cousin. And it's also Trick's wife. They've been separated for four years. Let's put a pin in that. Uh, they uh, do everything to avoid each other. Put a pin in that. Trina tells her that she needs to end things. And she claims that Trick ain't moving forward. That's what Joy is telling her. But she thinks, you know, there's hope. Put the pen in that. It's her B day. Uh, Trick is there with Trina to do a club appearance. It is what it is. You got Amara with her mother. Um, this was very Mona E, but her mother is looking at pictures, watching some of her other performances. And the reason I say this is very Mona E, because again, it's very convenient. But I think the reason they did it is because everybody questioning if you know Amara is truly black because there's been this thing saying that you know she's in blackface and whatnot and rightly with the whole young Hollywood thing let dare I say she has literally came out this week that she has a multi album multi million dollar contract so yeah fuck you do but anyway Amara um, feels that you know feels um Things aren't happening as fast as she would like them to. And, you know, she feels bad because her mother is still working, you know, has achy feet this and third from the job that she does when she was um, <clears throat> initially pursuing her career. Her mother was working additional jobs to help pay for that. And she wants to be able to sit here and bless her. And she starts to cry this and third. Now, what I will say is, though, I fucked with Amara. Let me be very clear. I'm not for shit dragging on like now. This shit of what she dealing with. Like, they can skip it for three episodes and come back to it, but if, if this is going to be an everyday occurrence, I'm literally going to sit here and put her fucking storyline on the shelf and revisit it if something major happens and we move the fuck on. So, I'm not really here for I'm here for what she's doing and the platform and everything, but I'm not here for, you know, this whole war with me. I, mm, not today. So, we got Gunplay, Tip, and Scrawberry. The girl name is that. I, I thought when Tip said Scrawberry, I thought... You, you you know motherfuckers from the hood and shit. You know, we don't really, we don't do the ST hours. We just, you know, do the SK hours. You know, Scree, Scrawberry, Scrim, that shit. No, no, no. And I, I, I know I know how shrimp is spelled, you know. But I'm just saying all of that is just, you know, SK hour. Don't say it. I know how to fucking speak English, bitch. But, um, <laughs> Tip is, you know, flirting heavy. Grabbing them, grabbing the motherfucking private parts and shit. And she asks him, are you single? He says, um, he pauses and says, um, right, right, right there. You know, Kiara, you watch this shit back. There it is right there. Pause. Um, but, um, <clears throat> he says, I got somebody I've been seeing. So now we got Bucky and Michelle Pooch. Now they friends, apparently. Michelle talks to Shay about the Prince, you know, the boy Prince incident. Now my whole thing is this. <clears throat> For you to call Prince and his crew Ratchet, look who the fuck your friend is. You got some motherfucking nerve. Moving the fuck forward, they talked the whole Pretty Ricky thing. She insinuates, and she literally, when I say she, Bucky insinuates that this man is weak. Now, of course, confessionals are shot well after the season has already aired. But even then, but even when she was talking to old girl, she literally was, you know, emasculating him, even though he wasn't there. But just like the way that he that she was talking down to him. Very fucking disrespectful. Whatever. <clears throat> so now we have 
do 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 do. Gunplay and Kiara, <clears throat> he tells her that Tip came on to him, but what he neglects to still tell her is they had a thing once upon a time. And, you know, he wants to stress that he curved her, kept his integrity, and says to her, try to pull the Jedi mind trick on, like, she should feel happy that he's even telling her, because most motherfuckers wouldn't have told her. And she pretty much says to him, like, okay, well, guess what? I'm going to start working with a motherfucking dude then says she want to work with these females and whatnot. He was like, hey, get the bag. So he all about securing that motherfucking bag. And now we got young Hollywood again. Fuck that dude. <clears throat> but I got to bring this dude up to get to where we at right now. So he got a motherfucking event shit. Don't give two fucks. Steph was invited. She brings Veronica. They come in to address him about, you know, um, you know, the whole thing that he did with, um, Amara, he wants to do a record with Veronica because all he sees is, you know, wow, I can go ahead and hit that and shit. They talk Amara. He says, you know, he <clears throat> talks about her little Afro puff and whatever is on her head. But he then says he did not mean to offend her. Motherfucker, you offended me. I'm pretty sure you offended any natural hair fucking black person. And when I say black, I mean all the other subsequent people as well, you know, those that are mixed, you know, Afro-Latinas and all, I feel fucking offended. <clears throat> because, did you really have to say Afro-Puff? Did you really have to say, you know, um, whatever's on her head? <clears throat> and for those, those of you who don't know, he was on IG Live, and <clears throat> literally, the motherfucker is unremorseful. <clears throat> Laughing about the entire situation and even said, you know, they put in the telequeen that out of all stuff I said they put that. He's very unapologetic. Why? Because it's going to be some raggedy ass motherfuckers that are still going to want to work with him and give him their money. <clears throat> I just hope they ain't black. Moving on. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. So, Veronica said that she was really sad. Now, I'm, now, mind you, I'm not feeling Veronica anyway. But as a friend, why would you sit here and tell the fucking enemy some shit like that? All she had to do was just say she felt very disrespected, but to sit here and say that she was sad, it's just like, you ain't no friend. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't nobody's friend. And Steph asks <clears throat> if he's open to apologize. He propositions. Veronica says, I apologize if you go on a date with me. Steph, like, you know what? She gives up and walks away, and I think she knew what was coming. She didn't want to be associated with it. So... <clears throat> She says to him, you can't afford, you know, this situation. But then she says, you know, I'll see if we can do dinner. You gonna fucking do it. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm I'm really be nice right now. So you got Bucky preparing a romantic dinner for Pleasure. He ain't show up. Pleasure is going on a date with somebody else who is Gabby, which is his ex. He wants to see <clears throat> what she got to give. She says that she's there to visit her sister. But she wants to see if there was something still there and even address the fact that they were together for some years. And then she just abruptly up, up and left. But want to see, you know, what's still there. Know what it is, is you. Because you, you another mother, like you another mother I'm going to talk about in a little bit. No, you, you don't want to see what's there. You feel that he about to sit here and pop, make some more motherfucking money. You want to jump on a motherfucking gravy train. Come on now. Come on now. Let's, let's call a thing a thing. I ain't here for the bullshit. Anyway, <clears throat> Kiara and Chinese Nikki, so I guess that's Plastique of Miami, pulls up on Tip. Squawberry tells, you know, that tells her that Tip and um, <clears throat> Gunplay used to be together back in the day. Now, of course, you know, Kiara didn't know that, so she tried to play the shit off like, you know, that shit didn't phase and whatnot. Tip says, you know, don't know if she's the main, but if he has a girl... I don't care. She even tells her to her face, y'all ain't married. She was like, I don't want him. And she was like, now nah, I see how you look. I'll probably still, I'll probably still get on the table and have you up there with me. And then she tells her, you got what I need. And apparently, I guess that was the perfect thing to sit here and take her attention off of the situation at hand. I guess she was all flattered and whatnot. And she just walks out all giddy and whatnot. Okay. <clears throat> so... What we on time? I think I'm doing good. I'm thinking no. so. Then we get tricking Joy. So <clears throat> Joy rolls up unannounced. Now, right there, that was that was already fucked up. You Don opens the door. I'm trying to figure. I want to know who the fuck career has Don successfully fucking managed. I want to know. 
<clears throat> now Joy tells him she um never gave him an explanation as to why she really left. She felt that she wasn't living and she wasn't happy. He says that she left him, got with another ass dude, and here she is. And then he even says to her that any dude you get <clears throat> that you get with after me needs to be a fucking upgrade. And you ain't gonna find that motherfucker while you living. And you know people feel the kind of way, but here's the thing. It goes back to that saying, you know, don't know what you got till it's gone. You won't miss me until I'm gone. Here's the thing, in that relationship, there's somebody that did some shit that you get with another motherfucker that ain't do the shit that you once did. Trust me when I say I got some messes that sit here and compare me to the niggas that they dating right now. Just like, you know, what well, you don't do it. Hey, it is what the fuck it is. It is what the fuck it is. So I'm not mad that he fucking said that. And her saying that she wants someone to love her. It is not about, you know, the money or whatnot. Trick gets up and walks away. <clears throat> and I can understand why he got the fuck up and walked away. Because here's the thing. You just up and left for no fucking reason. You were out. Y'all separated. It was the fuck it is. We could... Whatever, y'all separated. You out here fucking around with some other dudes, right? That shit ain't pop off the way that you wanted it to. Because if you wasn't getting some, so rather than talk to your husband, you just up and fucking leave. Now again, we're not gonna say it. I'm not. I'm not overshadowing the fact that Trick the got on lives and shit and said some crazy shit, spit it at the motherfucking camera, and shit talking to her and whatnot. I'm not neglecting. I'm not overlooking that <clears throat> but what i am saying is it is convenient you come back when the cameras are here it is convenient you come back when he and uh trend about to do a fucking album together it's convenient you come back when you think his star is about to fucking rise again it's all fucking convenient so you ain't you ain't shit <clears throat> you ain't shit i ain't got shit here for you i will say i will fucking say she is fucking gorgeous she is drop dead fucking gorgeous like shit Oh my fucking goodness, like that right there is some dark chocolate for your ass. And I'll, I, yeah. So that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. Answer the question of the day in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys momentarily for Love and Hip Hop New York. That one shit. Peace.